Before we get started in today's video, I just want to let you guys know that tomorrow, the 17th of August at 9 a.m., we're going to be dropping the Rev Till Death collection. We've been putting so much time and effort into this collection, guys. A ton of new merchandise, t-shirts, hats, tank tops, accessories, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested, set your alarms. 9 a.m. tomorrow, shop.throttle.com. The link's always in the description. Thanks. Time for the video. So today's video we're going to be finishing up the oil cooler install that Mickey was working on and then we're going to be installing a Perrin blow-off valve. Now one little tip I always like to do is before I finish filling the oil up completely, put about a quarter two in and then I'm going to wait a minute and look underneath the car and make sure there's nothing that's leaking. The worst thing you want to do is fill everything up and have your all brand new oil just fall down on the ground. Mickey making sure that no one started this car without oil. We now have oil. So let's go through these instructions. A few moments later. What happened? It's he, not tightened down and it went Skah! and it's everywhere. Oh, uh, doctor! And then you walked in it. Hey, at least you know the oil is clean. Doctor, 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 doctor. Looks like the top fitting here wasn't completely tightened down, so not a problem. I went ahead and tightened that down, so let's go ahead and retry that startup procedure. The other thing I did is um, refilled the coolant here, and we're gonna be bleeding that as well before we get to the blow off valve installation. Now let's go ahead and inspect. See if we got any leaks in here. That looks good. That looks good. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and check the oil level now. If we need to, we'll go ahead and add another quart. All right, so now let's go ahead and start the actual install for today, which is replacing the OEM WRX blow off valve with a nice new parent one. So let me show you guys what that kit looks like. Right, Calvin, you wanna explain what we got going on here? We got we got T-fittings, we got straight fittings, we got hoses, and a blow-off valve. How it all goes together, I don't know. Well, good thing we have instructions. What are we, what are we, not men? We don't need instructions. This is Yeah, so we're gonna be replacing these two here, pulling that vacuum hose off. Now, I think we're gonna be taking that little elbow off of the stock unit, the little um, cast aluminum piece, oh. and I think it attaches right to the bottom of this. Oh, so, that'd be cool. let me read the instructions, and then we'll go ahead and we'll disassemble the OEM unit. There we go. So what I noticed down in here is uh, we actually have an aftermarket hose. This is a Mishimoto uh, silicone coupler. I'm not exactly sure um, what's going on in there, but that's good to know that it's got some more reinforced parts now. This is the factory blow off valve and you guys can compare it to the parent unit. One thing I like to do is make sure that the flanges are the same. So what you can do is just kind of line them up just make sure that the bolt holes match up, which they do. Perfect. Let's go to the next step, which I believe is to remove these two screws at the bottom on the OEM blow-off valve and reattach that cast aluminum elbow to the bottom of the parent unit. Now one thing Perrin does mention in their instructions is to ensure that this O-ring is still in good condition and it's still present. You want to make sure it comes off of the factory blow off valve and stays with the aluminum elbow here. So ours looks like it's in pretty good shape. So let's go ahead and reinstall this onto the new Perrin blow off valve. So upon putting the new blow off valve onto the factory intercooler, I noticed that there's no gasket. Now, typically for blow off valves, you wanna have some type of gasket between here and there. It's usually like either like cork or sometimes even just RTV. But 
I don't see anything and nothing came in the kits. All right, so I headed over to the local Subaru dealership and actually picked up the right gasket. So we were right. This definitely does need a gasket here. So um, the other thing I did off camera um, was relocate some of these crankcase ventilation hoses underneath the intercooler as recommended by Perrin and unbolted the factory hard lines that were up here. So um, following that, I, I connected, whoa, I cut my hand. I connected the bottom hose for the recirculation um, back to the Perrin Blau valve and got the vacuum line extended. So basically the only thing left to do right now is install the gasket, then bolt up the blow-off valve and connect this vacuum hose here. So let's go ahead and do it. All right guys, so I got everything back together and bolted down, everything is nice and tight. We got zip ties on all the vacuum lines. Down under there, which you might not be able to see, is the T. Um, we got all the crankcase stuff routed underneath the intake manifold. The inner core is tightened back down now. I did have a little bit of trouble, as you guys might have seen, uh, bolting the blow valve, because this elbow is very close to the top of the intake manifold. So what I do recommend is loosening up these two couplers here and unbolting uh, this bolt here as well as this bolt here so that the inner cooler has a little bit of movement. That allowed me to bolt this on nice and tight. I believe uh, it's only about 11 to 15 foot-pounds of torque just because this is an aluminum uh, inner cooler here. So, so because this car is stock and it is not tuned yet, I'm actually not going to adjust any of the flow controls. Um, you can basically twist this housing and you can adjust the set screw in there if you want to do some more tuning. But we're going to wait for delicious tuning. If they want to make some adjustments, that's fine. Overall, let's go ahead and start the car. Just make sure there's no vacuum leaks and we'll go from there. All right, so we got Dustin out here. He's gonna help us rev it. Let's see if this thing can uh, make some good noises. I'm not really too sure. Stock boost. It's a little hard to tell inside. Yeah, when you're recirculating, you can't really hear it. It's more of the atmospheric that has that big blow off sound, but definitely no. Let's go for a ride. You wanna go for a ride? The car is not tuned, so we're not gonna really beat it up too bad, but we just wanna see and hear if it if it blows off the correct way. All right. You ready? Yeah. Little yeah. noise. I'm sure if you're in if you're in you know bigger booze. Yeah, you can give a little give it a little more than that. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Ooh, it's gonna sound good. Yeah, that's good. So yes, before you guys hose us in the comments, this car is getting tuned. It's getting tuned by Zach from Delicious Tuning. He is gonna be coming down, I think, early next week. We wanted to finish up all the mods before we had the car tuned. That way we didn't have to get it tuned multiple times, but. Don't hear any weird noises. Seems no, pretty fine. good. We're not overheating. Yeah, don't Give, break up. Yep. <laughs> oh yeah. That's cool. It's cool. I would say job is complete. As always guys, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. We'll see you guys in the next one.